Hey, how you doing guys? Uh, for this week's video, um, we're going to talk a little bit about Final Cut Pro 10.4.6. Now normally I don't do an update video on certain applications if it's not um, substantial enough. Uh, this one is mostly bug fixes and things like that. Now before I go into the main topic, uh, I really have to explain something I talked to you about before where Apple decides to um, transition out legacy formats or codexes, uh, for example, uh, Avid's uh, DNxHD and GoPro Cineform. And uh, I've talked uh, uh, at the whole topic just on that. Um, now, what they're going to do is, um, as far as the uh, new 10.4.6, it's going to allow to automatically detect and convert um, legacy formats and uh, if you check that on the upper left hand side with some of the new features and this is really made as a stopgap measure for uh, allow people to get some of their older media and and transcode it before um, the new mac os comes out and now i tried to find some i already up upgraded by the way and I tried to find some uh, media leg legacy media so I could actually try it out for myself. I did, like I said, update to the new um, Final Cut Pro 10 and compressor. Unfortunately, it seemed to work, so I didn't have enough time to really uh, show you that. But I can talk about it. And so, basically, what it does when you try to import it, it will detect, and then it'll give you a choice either to convert or cancel. Um, now, if you uh, obviously it converts it to ProRes, which is pretty standard in Final Cut Pro 10, and if you cancel, then obviously it, it probably won't uh, convert it or you can't import it. Now, if you decide to cancel later on, you can uh, actually go in there and convert it manually, and you simply it's a menu item in file and just check media for compatibility. It'll automatically detect and then it will convert it for you if you uh, click the convert button. And uh, also what's nice about it, it also puts the original media in a special folder as well. So um, you have, um, uh, I'm trying to think of the word here, keyword, um, the original media if you want to import it into other um, video editors or transcoders or something like that. Now, well, I think this is a great idea for Apple to do this, um, a great feature. Unfortunately, it appears they're going to, uh, once the uh, next version of Mac OS gets here, and uh, obviously new um, Final Cut Pro 10 and, and compressor as well, they're going to take that ability away uh, to convert your files automatically um, because it relies on QuickTime 7 framework. Um, once that gets removed, then it won't be able to uh, import it or transcode it at all. Obviously, there is workarounds. Use a third-party uh, transcoder to go in there and convert your files to ProRes or something that uh, Final Cut Pro 10 uh, recognizes. Now, I'm kind of against them getting rid of it, and the main reason... Uh, I, I do admit there are some pretty legacy formats out there that hardly anybody uses, but there's still quite a few codexes out there that is pretty standard um, among certain platforms like Avid and uh, GoPro. Uh, for, uh, of course, I talked about it before, Avid uh, DNxHD, and then now Cineform is open source, and even uh, DaVinci Resolve uses that codec. Uh, as a choice in its uh, video editor and colorization application as well. So I think we need to really keep that option in there just for the standard um, codex is still being used on a regular basis because more than likely those are going to be updated as well. But they decide to get rid of it for whatever reason. Perhaps in the future, um, we may not see it now. Uh, maybe the reasons why they're doing this, but I, I kind of do wish they would keep that feature in there. Uh, for the future because uh, it makes it a lot easier to do it on the fly rather than 
uh, using a third-party converter, which I've actually had to do when uh, Final Cut Pro 10 didn't support MXF uh, with my Canon C100, and then I had to use a third-party converter into ProRes, and then import it into Final Cut Pro 10. Kind of a uh, a lengthy workaround, which I wasn't very happy with. Now, of course, it's got native import of MXS, MXF, and even export. So I figure I definitely wanted to tell you about this. It was important update enough to uh, mention it. So as always, thanks for watching and see you guys later.